Good afternoon. I'm Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, and I'm honored every single day to represent the good people of Pennsylvania, and honored to be here today in Butler Township, a wonderful community, a community where people love one another, respect one another, and unfortunately last night had to deal with tragedy in their neighborhood. I've just come from a briefing with the FBI and the Pennsylvania State Police. And I'm joined today, of course, by Colonel Christopher Paris of the Pennsylvania State Police. Law enforcement will have more to share throughout the day, but I'd like to make a few comments separate from the ongoing investigation. First and foremost, the assassination attempt on the former president, Donald Trump, last night was absolutely unacceptable and tragic. Lori and I are grateful that the former president is safe and according to him and his team is fine. It's also important to note that last night three of our fellow Pennsylvanians were shot, one fatally and two in critical condition. I've just spent time speaking to the families and I want to offer my prayers and the prayers of all 13 million Pennsylvanians for the two individuals who are being treated at this time. We lost a fellow Pennsylvanian last night, Corey Comparatore. I just spoke to Corey's wife and Corey's two daughters. Corey was a girl dad. Corey was a firefighter. Corey went to church every Sunday Corey loved his community, and most especially, Corey loved his family. Corey was an avid supporter of the former president and was so excited to be there last night with him in the community. I asked Corey's wife if it would be okay for me to share that we spoke, and she said yes. She also asked that I share with all of you that Corey died a hero, that Corey dove on his family to protect them last night at this rally. Corey was the very best of us. May his memory be a blessing. Last night was shocking for this community and for this Commonwealth, and I know for this country. Political disagreements can never ever be addressed through violence. Disagreements are okay, but we need to use a peaceful political process to settle those differences. This is a moment where all leaders have a responsibility to speak and act with moral clarity, where all leaders need to take down the temperature and rise above the hateful rhetoric that exists and search for a better, brighter future for this nation. It's the work that I try to do every day here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And that's the work that falls to each and every American right now. And so I ask that you join me in prayer for the two Pennsylvanians who are in critical condition, that we continue to wish for a full and speedy recovery and pray for the former president, and that the Comprator family remains in our thoughts and prayers. They have some very challenging times ahead of them. They will have an empty seat at the dinner table for the rest of their lives. But we need to make sure that Corey's memory is forever a blessing. And here in Pennsylvania, we will see to it that that is the case. And with that, I'll be happy to try and take a few of your questions. Governor, a lot of folks are, are starting to ask the tough question about whether that building that the shooter access should have been I'm not going to get into any questions regard answer any questions regarding the ongoing investigation. Uh, I trust that the FBI and the Pennsylvania State Police uh, will keep you posted throughout the day and in the days ahead as to their investigation. Governor, there were some concerning items that the police had found in the suspect's vehicle. Uh, do you have any update on those? And are you confident at this point the threat is 
overt that he acted alone and that the public is in fact safe? The investigation is ongoing and law enforcement will update you on the status of their investigation throughout the day. I have not spoken directly to the former president. I have wished him well. Um, I think multiple times last evening through statements, Lori and I have, um, the people of Pennsylvania, I know we're praying for him. And again, according to his team uh, and himself, it seems as though he will be fine, obviously, relatively speaking. Uh, and we're glad to see that violence uh, is never acceptable. I should also let you know that I did speak to President Biden. He called me last night. Uh, to make sure that here in the Commonwealth we had all the resources we needed. I assured him that we did. Uh, at the time, he had yet to speak to President Trump. I think they connected later in the evening, and he wanted me to know that he was trying to reach out uh, to the uh, former president. Um, I think that that was the honorable and right thing to do, and I'm, I'm glad that President Biden did that. Uh, we have no unmet needs at this time, and we're working in concert with our federal partners, and I let the president know that. I spoke to the family of one of them, and the other um, left a detailed message, and I'm not going to get into their status. That will be shared by the Pennsylvania State Police and or the family later today. Can I say, I just missed the last part of what she said. I have directed that flags be flown at half staff in Corey's memory, and uh, our chief of staff is working through that process now. My message to all Pennsylvanians, my message to all Americans, is to be firm in your beliefs, uh, to believe what you believe, to advocate for what you believe, and to be engaged in the political and civic process, but to always do so peacefully. To remember that while we may be Democrats or Republicans, above all else, we are Americans. And if you look at the story of this great nation over the last 248 years, a nation that was born right here in Pennsylvania, it's been ordinary Americans at every single step of the way, rising up, demanding more, seeking justice, advocating for change, and doing so peacefully. And those who have advocated for such chains peacefully, they have been the ones to bring that about. We have to remember that even in these times where there are real divisions, that we have to address those divisions through engagement in the political and civic process in a peaceful manner. That is incumbent upon all political leaders of all parties, and it is incumbent upon the public. I will tell you that notwithstanding the tragedy that we saw last night here in Butler, the awful tragedy, that every day when I'm around Pennsylvania, I see the very best of Pennsylvanians. People who do have fervent beliefs, people who do have passionate beliefs, but who engage in a peaceful manner and who love their neighbors and who engage with people in their communities, even those that they might have differences from. We need to learn from our history in this Commonwealth and in this country, and we need to bring our better angels forward and carry that forward into this political season. I'll take one more, yes. His wife shared with me that he dove on his family to protect them. As for any other information, that will be shared by law enforcement. Thank you all very much.